Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. In the last video, I answered the question, what does a spectrum analyzer do? There's a link to this video up here in the corner just for you. In this video, I will be explaining how it does what it does. And in the next video, I will be providing a step-by-step -step description of how to use a spectrum analyzer. The link to this video is, well, you guessed it, up here in the corner for you. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe. Let's go to the Spectrum Analyzer Arena and see who is playing. When we run into the arena of the Spectrum Analyzer, we can see two distinct teams playing on the field. The first is the Fourier Analyzer, or FFT Analyzer. The second is the Heterodyne Analyzer. First, we will turn our attention to the Fourier Analyzer. From a hardware perspective, the Fourier Analyzer looks something like this. The input is applied to a low-pass filter. This is also known as the anti-aliasing filter. It is used to prevent what we might call ghosts in the data. We then come to the High Resolution Analog to Digital Converter, or ADC, which samples the time domain data at a fixed rate and provides these samples to the processor. Now, I will address the High Resolution Analog to Digital Converter in a bit more detail a little later. Now, the ADC samples are placed in memory and then the processor performs the Fast Fourier Transform, or FFT, on this data. After the mathematical machinations are complete, the processor formats the data to be displayed on the screen. Now, I just mentioned that the processor performs an FFT on this sample data, but what is an FFT, or Fast Fourier Transform? Well, if we were to know the mathematical formula which describes a signal in the time domain, we would use the mathematical process known as a Fourier transform to translate this time domain formula into the frequency domain formula. But we don't know the mathematical time domain formula for an unknown signal. All we have is, well, the signal. The first step in the Fourier analyzer is to sample the unknown signal at a known sample rate using an analog to digital converter. So now we have a bunch of samples at discrete time intervals that represent the voltage of the unknown signal at each time interval. The problem is the Fourier transform does not work on sampled data in its original form. However, some really bright mathematician came up with the discrete Fourier transform, which uses sample time domain data to provide frequency domain data. But this doesn't completely solve our problem because the discrete Fourier transform requires a lot of computing power to produce results. This makes it nearly impossible to come up with an instrument that will provide a real-time display of frequency domain data from a stream of time domain samples. In answer to this, some equally brilliant mathematician came up with a much more efficient way to do this transform. This new and faster method is called the Fast Fourier Transform, or FFT. The output of the FFT is frequency bins, which contains the amplitude of the signal at the frequency assigned to each bin. The bin number is associated with frequency. This becomes the horizontal coordinate for what we see on the screen. The value in that bin is associated with the amplitude of the frequency component. This becomes the vertical coordinate for what we see in the screen. The software does some number crunching and then draws a smooth line between each of these data points to produce the completed display. The width of each of these bins determines the frequency accuracy and the resolution of the analyzer. It also affects the accuracy of the reported amplitude. 
but there's a hard brick wall of reality that faces us with the Fourier analysis spectrum analyzer, and that has to do with the analog to digital converter. So let's talk bits in our ADC. If we want a reliable and reasonably accurate idea of the amplitude of a signal for a given sample, we need an ADC with a lot of bits. The absolute minimum number of bits that we would need to achieve an analyzer, which could go up to plus 10 dBm and still be able to see a signal as small as minus 80 dBm, is 16 bits. If we want to see down to minus 100 dBm, we need an absolute positive minimum of 20 bits. Now, this is with the lowest significant bit representing a level of minus 80 or minus 100 dBm. For better resolution of these low end magnitudes, we would have to add a lot more bits to our ADC. Now, with this in mind, let's talk sample rate in our ADC. According to Shannon's law of sampling, the sample rate needs to be only twice the highest frequency contained in our signal. But various factors involved in the process would lead to erroneous results if this is all we had. This is why the actual sampling rate used in the industry is many times faster than the highest frequency contained in the signal to be sampled. A reality of the hardware dictates that the more bits your ADC has, the lower the maximum sampling rate will be. Now, I, I went out and I did a quick perusal of what was available through DigiKey. They had a 20-bit ADC, which has a maximum sampling rate of 1.8 megahertz, and they cost $55 a piece. They had stock of this one. Best case scenario for high resolution ADCs was a 24 bit ADC with a maximum sampling rate of 4 megahertz. They cost $43 a piece, but unfortunately, they're kind of looks like they're kind of made out of unobtainium. They had no stock right now. This fact significantly limits the maximum frequency that we can analyze using a Fourier analysis spectrum analyzer if we want reasonably good resolution and dynamic range. So, in rides the heterodyne analyzer to the rescue. As the name implies, a heterodyne analyzer operates very much the same way as a radio receiver. It has a lot of the same building blocks to make it work. We have the RF input stage which feeds an RF mixer. The other input to the RF mixer is the local oscillator. The output of the RF mixer is a combination of frequencies, one of which coincides with a specific desired intermediate frequency, or IF. To make sure that we're only paying attention to the desired IF, we follow the IF amplifier with an IF band pass filter. After this, we diverge from the design of a normal radio receiver that we might be listening to. We want to be able to display very small signals to relatively large signals spanning as much as 100 dB on our screen. In order to accommodate this large dynamic range, we follow the IF filter with a logarithmic amplifier. And you go, well, what is a logarithmic amplifier? A normal linear amplifier has an output which is strictly some constant, the amplification factor, times the voltage of the input signal. A logarithmic amplifier has an output which is a non-linear amplification factor that is dependent on the voltage of the input. Its output is some constant times the natural logarithm of the ratio of the input voltage divided by some voltage reference. Low amplitude signals are amplified more than higher amplitude signals. And believe it or not, this can be accomplished in a somewhat non-precise way by using an op-amp with a diode as a feedback resistor. In our spectrum analyzer, the next operational block in line is the detector. And this is where the modern spectrum analyzers and the older all analog spectrum analyzers part ways. 
the detector in our analog spectrum analyzer is producing a voltage commensurate with the amplitude of the IF signal coming from the logarithmic amplifier. The output of the detector is what is referred to as the video signal. The video signal goes through one or more levels of filtering to prepare it to be displayed. And finally, we arrive at the display. Now, we have to talk about frequency control because what we've covered so far is tuned to a single frequency determined by the frequency of the local oscillator. Frequency control is provided by way of a sawtooth generator, which controls the frequency of the local oscillator and serves as the horizontal sweep signal. As the sawtooth signal voltage increases, the frequency of the local oscillator also linearly increases. Meanwhile, at the display, the trace is moving from left to right on the screen. As the trace moves across the screen, the frequency increases and the vertical deflection represents the amplitude of the signal. So what is different about how it was done and how it is being done today? Well, in place of the analog base detector, we have an analog to digital converter which samples the voltage of the IF signal. The processor is in direct control of the frequency of the local oscillator and the operation of the analog to digital converter or detector. It also has digital signal processing capability to the video signal filtering using the samples it gets from the ADC. And finally, it has direct control over the display. So it kind of goes this way. The processor tells the local oscillator to go to a particular frequency. Then the processor tells the ADC detector to take a sample. The processor then adds this sample to the DSP filtering and performs the DSP filtering operation on the resulting video signal. The processor writes the new data, both the horizontal and the vertical positions, to the display and then, well, rinse and repeat. Now, while the Fourier analyzer and the heterodyne analyzers are the two main teams, there are some out there that operate with a foot in each camp, like the RF Explorer handheld spectrum analyzer. In a hybrid style spectrum analyzer like the RF Explorer, they use the heterodyne principle to bring the input signal down into much lower frequencies. The local oscillator is not swept like they do in the purely heterodyne analyzers. The output of the heterodyne front end goes to an analog to digital converter and with this hybrid approach, the IF is now sampled in the same fashion as they do for a Fourier analyzer. The processor does an FFT and the display is then updated with the results of the FFT. You now have an idea of how a spectrum analyzer does what it does. In the next video, I will provide a step-by-step -step description of how to use a spectrum analyzer. If you found this video helpful, do click on the like and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.